Shalom. First off, I'd like to give an all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai. Secondly, I'd like to give uh, double honor to the elders of Great Millstone who rule well and who taught us this truth. And a Shalom to all the Akim out there pushing this truth out, you know, in sincerity and, you know, with a lot of fire in them, all right? So, I was, um, I was thinking about a lesson to do, and I went out. And we went over some scriptures with a brother from with two brothers from the camp, and they broke down a bunch of scriptures on the color of the scriptures, and I just decided that I was gonna break it down and make a series of lessons about the scriptures we went over. So this first installment, I'm probably gonna name it "Color in the Bible," and this first installment is gonna be about the people. So the actual people in the Bible, the scriptures that I'm gonna bring out, are gonna be referring to people, Israelites in the Bible. And prove to, you know, you brothers out there, you people watching that color is very much present in the Bible. So first scripture I'm going to start off, I'm going to jump right into it, is Genesis 2 and 7. This is Genesis 2 and 7, and it says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground, all right, and, bre and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul, all right. So it says, the Lord God formed man out of the dust, alright? So dust, that means ground, that, that, like, you know, that, that refers to the ground. Dust is something, you know, something brown or dark, alright? It's dark colored, alright? It says, man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And what is that breath of life? That breath of life is the laws, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the scriptures, alright? And man became a living soul, alright? So, I went into the Hebrew right in the scriptures and I looked up the word man and it came out to be Adama, which is also, you know, how you say, um, similar to how you say Adam, alright? Adama, and, and if you go into the blue letter, I'll put it post-production, and then I went along and I looked up the word ground, and it says Adamaha which is ground also alright so there's only basically a one letter difference between the word man and ground when you go into the Hebrew letting you know that the two words are interconnected they both essentially mean the same thing which means ground and it's pretty simple to understand or to connect the fact that the ground is something dark alright so that was a little basic scripture, a little breakdown real quick on that scripture. Alright, next scripture I'm going to hit is going to be Genesis 42 and 3. Alright, because here's another thing. A lot of men in the Bible have been confused for Egyptians, alright? It is already common knowledge that the Egyptians were dark colored people, alright? So in the scriptures, there's various, various, various examples of Israelites that are confused for Egyptians, all right? And that's something that happens various times in the scriptures to different people. And why is that? The only reason that someone with, you know, a working mind can come to, like, that conclusion is because the Israelites themselves were also colored people, all right? So this is, um, this is Genesis 42 and 3. And Joseph's ten brethren went to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren, for he said, Lest per, um, peradventure mischief fall be, fo, be, befall him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn amongst those that, that came for... The famine was in the land of Canaan, and Joseph was the governor over the land, and he, and he, it was that sold to all the people of the land, and Joseph's brethren came and bowed themselves before him with their faces to the earth, and Joseph saw his brethren and knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew him not. 
And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said unto them, Ye are spies, to see the nakedness of the land, ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food, and thy servants come. We all are one man's sons. We are true men. Thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, and the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. And behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. And Joseph said unto them, that it, it uh, that is it that I spake unto you, saying, Ye are spies. Hereby ye shall be proved. By the life of Pharaoh ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. Alright, so basically this is this small excerpt that I read. This was on Genesis 42. I read all the way up to 15. And it's telling the story of what happened when Joseph grew. Joseph grew up and became a leader in Egypt, all right? And his brothers confused him. Like, he grew up, because if you go back to Genesis 37, you read the story about Joseph. His brothers sold him into slavery, all right, to the Ishmaelites. And they brought him to Egypt, all right? So Joseph became a man of, a man of power in Egypt. And his brothers came into Egypt to buy food, all right. But he did; they didn't recognize him, but he recognized them, his brothers, all right. So this, the only reason that that they like that Joseph was able to es become a big person in his society was because he was also dark skinned like the Egyptians. So he basically passed as an Egyptian, and his brothers confused him as an Egyptian as well, because. If they would have recognized him, they would have known, oh, hey, that's Joseph, you know. But they didn't because he blended in so well with the rest of the Egyptians and with all the other um, dark-colored people that were, you know, on the land. All right? But I recommend you brothers read Genesis 37 and read, continue reading, read the rest of Genesis 40, 42. It's a great read. You know, it gives you nice little... um. Nice little, you know, puts everything in perspective as to what happened after, you know, Genesis 37 and Joseph was sold into slavery, all right? All right, so the next scripture I'm going to bring out is Exodus 2 and 16. And it says, And the priests of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to water their, fa their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up. And helped them, and watered their flock. And when they came to Ruel, their father, he said, How is it that ye, come, that ye are come so soon today? And they said, An Egyptian delivered us out of the land, uh, out of the hand of the shepherd, and also drew water enough for us, and watered the flock. And he said unto his daughters, and where is he? Why is it that ye have left the man? Call him, that he may eat bread. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zipporah his daughter. Alright? So this is a quick, quick example of another Israelite man in the scriptures that was confused as an Egyptian. Alright? So Moses helped these ladies. Alright? He helped the daughters of, um, what was his name, Ruel, you know, get get water, all right, fill, draw, draw water and fill, fill, I'm guessing, fill some containers of water so they can take back to their dad, and he helped them do that, all right, and they said that it was an Egyptian, and the reason that they confused him as an Egyptian was because he was dark-skinned like all the Egyptians, so if you're dark-skinned and you're in Egypt, then... It's pretty much, you know, they, they pretty much draw the conclusion that you're Egyptian because everyone else is dark-skinned there as well, all right? But what they didn't know is that Moses was actually, um, you know, an Israelite, all right? 
So another scripture proven that you know the um, Israelites were colored people. I mean, it doesn't get any more you know it doesn't get any more basic than these scriptures that I'm bringing out. All right. If the Israelites were Edomites, as they say, if the Israelites were white, like how they say they are, in a place like Egypt, they would have they would have noticed them almost instantly. All right. Same thing with Joseph. If Joseph was a cracker. They would have seen him. They would have seen him right away, and they would have and his brothers would have recognized him as well, because they would have seen that that's that cracker that looks just like us. But it didn't happen like that. It, they were dark-skinned people, and that's why he was confused with the Egyptians, because the Egyptians were also dark-skinned people. All right? It's hard to tell the difference between an Egyptian and an Israelite. All right? God. All right, so now the next scripture I'm going to bring out is in the New Testament. All right? And this is, um, this is Acts 13 and 1. Now we're in the church. Now there were there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simon that was called Nigger and Lucius of Cyrene and Manaen which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrach and Saul. All right. So the key point here is the word Nigger. All right. Nigger, nigger, all right. That's that's pretty much it, man. Right there, it says it. If you go, if you look up the word nigger, all right, which I will real quick on my phone because I actually didn't look this one up when I wrote it down for the lesson. I could, you know, I could bring it out real quick. But even without looking it up, you can tell nigger, all right. That's that's a word that we basically use today still. Alright? It's a word that we use today and it um it resembles the word, you know, nigga. It's spelled with one G, but it's the same word. Alright? So let me look it up real quick. Alright, it doesn't say much on the blue letter, alright, but, oh, yes it does, uh, let me see, I don't know if you brothers can see that, uh, it's mirrored, but right there, one nigger black, alright, so that's, <laughs> that's it for that one, alright, that's case closed for that one, alright, it says outline of biblical uses, uh, nigger equals black, and then it says surname of the prophet Simeon. And the, the the image is mirrored, but I'll put it up post production in a better room. Um, all right, so you guys can see it a lot better. All right, all right. So the next scripture I'm gonna bring out is Acts chapter 21, verse 30, start at 37. And Paul was to be led into the castle and he said unto the chief captain may I speak unto thee who said can thou speak Greek art thou art not thou that Egyptian which before these days made us an uproar and led it out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers alright so this chief captain confused Paul and asked him if he was in um he asked him if he was an Egyptian all right so that's the point that I wanted to get to in this scripture he asked him if he was the Egyptian that led the uproar and led it out into the wilderness four thousand men that were murderers all right and that he asked him that question not because Paul looked like an Edomite not because Paul had super super light skin and looked like you know Joe Cracker he asked him that question because it is impossible, it was impossible, and it might still be impossible to tell the difference between an Israelite, all right, whether, you know, from the southern kingdom, and an Egyptian, all right? 
and that's that's plain right there. All right. Okay, so now we're gonna hit up a few other scriptures that pertain to color. All right. 